This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. I'm Liz Gill, and I'm with the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, who is ASC certified. Hello, Allison. Hey, Liz. Today, we're going to talk about coolant and radiators in between your vehicle repair calls. And I know absolutely nothing about coolant and radiators. I have a car, and it comes with a radiator. But wait, do, do all cars come with radiators? No, uh, the new cars, the electric cars do not come with radiators. They don't need them. They don't get hot enough to need it. And if they do, they use the Freon from the AC system. Okay, so uh, radiators, coolant mm-hmm. keeps things cool What they for the internal combustion engines? It also heats up your air for your heat in your car. Ooh, so it's part okay. of your heating system, too. And okay. it circulates through there. So, oh, okay. So, that's, can... so it heats and cools. <laughs> All righty. Okay, so let's go back to let's go back to my car. So with a radiator, what do I need to do? Like I have a mm-hmm. uh, what year do I have a 2018 car? Do I do I need to do anything with the radiator? No, you need to leave it alone. Uh, just make sure the level's good. Keep an eye on the level. And but uh, coolant lasts a long time. Um, most all of it is a long life coolant these days, and it goes anywhere from 100 to 150 thousand miles before you need to change it. But um, so I generally recommend changing it at 100 thousand miles and doing a flush when you do that. Um, always do a flush when you do that, and it's a solution that you use to do that with. And and so that's what I recommend. That's all you really have to worry about on it. Now, if the coolant level is low, then you may have a leak. That could be a problem, and that needs to be worked out. Okay, so level. Does that mean there's a dipstick or a little gauge or what? Right. On your reservoir for the coolant, mm-hmm. you'll have a level on there, maximum, minimum. Make sure that stays where it's supposed to be on there. And then you can take the cap off, of course, when the car is cold, and you want it all the way up as high up in that little nozzle as you can. If it's low in there or you can see the fins down below, then you know you've got a problem. It's it's losing coolant. And that's for older cars. You're generally your newer cars aren't going to have a leak, but your older cars will develop them pretty easily. And um, so that's what you need to check to make sure your level is okay. And that's, that's it. No dipsticks on coolant. And then the little gauge on the dashboard, the, the hot and cold temperature, mm-hmm. if that goes... Do cars ever get really cold? I mean, well, I guess yes. we're in Mississippi, but oh, and, and, and they well, do. Some people, if they have a heating problem with their car, they'll take the thermostat out. And this is not a, really like a good idea, but you, you can technically do that. And it'll run a car cold. But what it does is it keeps it running richer to try to compensate for the cool temperature of the car. And so that it burns off emissions correctly and that sort of thing and, and follows that fine balance. So it throws off how your car runs. So it's, that's so it, technically it can run too cool. OK, so uh, first easy thing is don't you don't need to mess with your coolant you do need to check it and then probably at a hundred thousand miles you get it you flush it yeah go okay. ahead and flush it and the flushing is a solution you can get at auto parts store it's only like seven bucks and you you follow the instructions on there it's really easy to do a coolant flush anyone can do this and refill their system um it's it's pretty pretty easy and and to the point about as easy as an oil change and you run the the flush in there uh follow the instructions you can do it for 15 minutes or you can run it for a few days the reason you want to run a flush is because it gets disgusting inside of there um over time you have flaking and scale that builds up on the inside of your system that can clog up your radiator and make it not as efficient anymore it can cause different problems it can eat up your hoses in there over time and it can clog up the heater core which is under the dash that's the part that lets it heat up the inside of the interior of the car if that gets clogged up then you've got a 
really serious problem because you have to go up under the dash and take the part of the dash out to get to it. It's very expensive to fool with the heater core. So these are things you'll be helping prevent happen if you run the flush. And the flush will clean it all out and make it perfect and pretty again and get the rust and corrosion that builds up in the system out of it. Now, if I were to get the flush and read the instructions and do it myself, the one thing I do know about coolant is that they always make they always tell you, make sure your dog or cat doesn't drink it. Right. What do you do with the leftover stuff? Or does the flush, does it, ch- do you drain things or is that yeah. something different? No, what you do, so I'll, I'll kind of make a, do a quick step by step on it. You um, take your car when it's cool and drain it out the bottom of the radiator. It has a little drain plug on there and then you just take that off, let it drain out the radiator, put that plug back in and put the flush in and then fill it with water with the flush and you can run it 15 minutes and do a pretty good flush or you can run it for a few days and then bring it back when it's cool drain all that out and then fill it up with the 50 50 mix of whatever antifreeze is needed for your car whatever coolant or antifreeze is recommended for your car and there there are different kinds and different cars need certain ones Um, a lot of asian cars use the same type formula american cars tend to use certain ones you've got dexron um, you've got different kinds and they used to all use a use a, a universal kind, but that's that's not true anymore for the later models. Yep, yeah. of course they started changing that up and putting out different products, and. Uh, so you would fill it up with that and then burp your system by burping the top radiator hose to get the air out of the system as, as, as you turn the car on and let it run. Oh, and also, I need to make this a, a point real quick. Always turn your heater on when you're doing a flush so that it runs through that heater core and cleans it out, too. There's a little valve that opens there that you want to make sure it's circulating. So turn your heater on full blast and let it circulate and then when you're refilling the coolant back up top it off all the way to the top burp the system until it's no more air coming out from the top radiator hose and when it's at operating temperature or close to it go ahead and put your radiator cap back on and then you should be good to go and do it on a flat surface because you want the air bubbles to come up out of the car. If it's at an angle, if you've got the back end up, then that's not going to release the air. You don't want air in your system. So that's that's the basic way. Some of them are a little bit more complicated than that. You have to burp it with a little burp screw or a little bleeder valve. Um, that's on some of your Chevy vehicles mostly that I've seen that on. But otherwise, it's really easy. And that's it. That's it. All right. Uh, We're going to be talking about coolants and radiators, but that's just between your vehicle repair questions. So if you have a question, we'd love for you to give us a call. 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-7464. We do have a call. Let's go to Mobile, and James has called in. James, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect. Go ahead. Yes, I have a um, I have a 2007 Chevrolet Silverado, and there's a lot of squeaking coming from the the front two wheel wheels. Where, like, if I'm driving through a parking lot on speed bumps, even any kind of small bump, even when I'm getting out of the truck, like when I'm closing the door, it, it the whole front end squeaks a lot. Okay. Well, with squeaking on suspension, it can be hard to track down exactly what it is. So, but I can give you a tip on trying to figure out where it's at. Take some um, silicone lubricant spray and bounce bounce your car and get up. Have someone bounce it while you're up under there and see if you can hear where it's coming from. If you can get up under there and. If not, spray just the ball joint and see if it stops. Okay, and say it doesn't work. It's still squeaking somewhere. Spray it on your other connections, like the stabilizer link. Spray a little bit on one part of the link connection. Bounce it, see if it stopped it. And that's one way you can break down what is actually squeaking on your vehicle. And that's really the only way. But there's, there's, there's probably 
probably 10 connections on each side of the wheel that can cause squeaking on suspension problems. And it doesn't particularly mean something's broke or anything like that. It's just it's it's making noise. Um, it can be your strut mount. It can be where the strut's attached to the wheel hub assembly. It can be the stabilizer link. It can be the control arm, one of the control arm bushings. It can be the ball joint. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the different connections are under there that can cause that kind of noise. And they can be a little bit difficult to diagnose and track down. And sometimes it's multiple components causing that sound, that squeaking noise. So um, I just wish you luck on tracking it down and hopefully not spending too much money on it trying to figure out which one it is. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks for calling in, James. Now, uh, Allison, on the show, a lot of times you've said uh, make sure you have a good relationship with a with a independent automotive person. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Is there a particular type of ASC certified individual that might be good at ha- at helping James figure out his squeakiness? Um, for or that, um. Yeah, you the people that do a lot of suspension work, you'll see the shops that say brakes and suspension. Okay. Those guys are going to be pretty good at uh, and deal with that often. So that's what you want. So it kind of is a specialty area. They usually lump it in with brakes. So brakes and suspension, and usually they're in with tire and oil change places, and they're, okay. they're in together. And they sometimes they're really good shops. Sometimes they're okay. But some, some of them are really good at diagnosing and breaking down something like that, like a little squeaky noises on the, on the suspension. So that's, that would be a good idea for him to go to. All right. We're going to continue our discussion of radiators when we come back from our break. If you have a problem with your vehicle, any kind of problem, give us a call at 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672-672. 7464. Hey, you could also send us an email. Auto at mpbonline.org is your car under recall. We have a list of ones that are when we come back. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. contractor ever tell you the price of something and it sounds so high you think "Eh, maybe i'll try it myself some jobs just aren't that difficult and yes you can do it if you want to find out how to do those things listen to fix it 101 podcast everywhere Welcome back to AutoCorrect with Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic. I am Liz Gill. Now, if you can't listen to our show all the way through live, do try to find our podcast. You can listen to podcasts on your smart speaker. One way is to get Amelia or whatever to play tune in and then access autocorrects recorded shows that way allison we were listed as a news podcast so that's why folks maybe have had a hard time kind of searching for us if you're browsing by subject matter but we're in automotive now great we're in education how to and we're in something else. Okay. okay. <laughs> so well, we, we got our, our podcast uh, categories updated so that folks can find us a little easier if they forget that our name is auto space correct. Here are the recalls for the week. Uh, light week now. Just the one. The 2019-2018 Lexus Toyota cars, minivans, pickup trucks, and SUVs, the fuel pump may stop operating. Toyota said the issue is being investigated and the remedy is under development. Oh, wow. That sounds like a big one right there. Yeah. So uh, you can find out if your car has a past recall by going to the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration's website, which is NHS. 
ftsa.gov slash recalls and you just put in your VIN number and they'll tell you about your particular car. We've been talking about radiators and coolants today, but that's just between your phone calls, whatever you want to talk about. We've got Allison here and she is a fantastic generalist and specificist on some things so and if she doesn't know if she can't steer you in the right direction uh, she'll tell you so truthfully and try to steer you in the general direction Mm -hmm. all right so let's go to leanne who is calling from jackson leanne thanks for calling in today go ahead Hey. Hey, ladies. Hey. Uh, quick question in regards to the coolant flush that you have been talking about. Um, I was in for an oil change yesterday, and um, they recommended a coolant flush. I've, I just purchased a pre-owned 2014 Mazda CX-9 um, about three months ago, and I've got just over 70,000 miles. Um, I know you said y'all recommend a coolant flush after about 100,000 miles. Um, does that matter if the vehicle is five, six years old? Do you recommend it at a certain time versus 100,000 miles as well? And how do I know? Um, I do it based on mileage on the 100,000 mile. And it sounds like you're due then in that case. And they were right to recommend that. Okay. So um, even though even though it's 70,000 miles? Um, oh, your ahead. car. I'm sorry. I, I missed yeah, that part. I've, so you're only, only got, at 70,000? I've only got 70,000, just over 70,000 miles. So Then I, I wouldn't do it yet. So okay. they, they, I'm not real sure. They may have uh, kind of called it wrong on that then. Yeah, so, okay. So, okay. Sorry about that. But, yeah, it, it should last at 100,000 in 2014. Something that may help is to look in your owner's manual at uh-huh. the maintenance schedule. But the thing about those is sometimes they'll tell you exactly when the coolant is due for your car. Okay. Because sometimes it does vary um, a little bit, not a lot. Okay. But sometimes it just says check it. Okay. So that could be what they're basing it on. But I would go through your owner's manual. And in, in, in your owner's manual, sometimes it has a separate book that's just for your maintenance that's okay. not in your owner's manual. And you can go through there and and go through each mileage interval to see to see if you can find when the coolant is due, if it says change it at this time. Okay. But, but a lot of times they do say just check it. But that's a little tip on that. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thanks, Liam. All right. Thank you. You know, I had one car at one time, and they actually wanted you to, like, get in the owner's manual or in the maintenance guide. You, like, wrote down and had the dealer or the shop or whatever, like, put a stamp or put a signature on the time so that you knew you had it done. See, I forget, and I just shove receipts in the glove box, and we need to, here we go, we need to invent a a owner's manual uh, checkup listing where you actually write down and when things are done and we need to we need to get together and come up with that well or did, did somebody else already invent that I haven't heard of anything like that. It would be neat, and I've thought about it, but the actual logistics of working that out per car, per car manufacturer, <laughs> seems overwhelming right? Um, and, and impossible because then it changes between which engine is in the car. Uh, is it the V6? And All right. We'll just have to stick to trying to win the Powerball sorry, for getting it's some extra great money. Idea. It's, it's a wonderful idea. All right. Well, let's go now to Judith, who's calling from Kiln. Judith, thanks for calling in to autocorrect go ahead yeah i have a 2008 equinox and it runs hot and I, i've done put a new radiator new fan a new thermostat i bought a 60 dollar bottle of slush stuff it just it'll run hot and sometimes i can go all the way 60 miles and back it don't run hot and then i can go a mile to the store and it runs hot huh I wonder if your water pump's trying to fail on you or something you like that. Got a new water pump. You t- oh, okay, you got a new water pump too. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm no idea what could be going on with it. Um, you've got you basically got a brand new system. The only thing you haven't fooled with or replaced is the heater core, but that it still should circulate through your engine and be cooling everything down. Well, yeah, they took the hose and stuck it in the heater core. You know where it goes into the um. The, the oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and flushed it. It went right on through. Flushed it out. Okay. 
And I, I bought that bottle of flush stuff and put it in there, and it just ran through, too. Let me ask this question. Are you losing any fluid? Is it is it no, leaking at all? Not, no leaks anywhere. No, no leak. It's just it's just overheating. Uh, and, and I'm it sure you replace it. It doesn't do it all the time. And you probably replace the radiator cap. And oh, yeah. on that Chevy Equinox, that's electric cooling fans on there? Yep. There's two on the front of it. Yep. Ma'am, I have no Allison's idea. Allison's thinking hard. I'm I can see hard. the little uh, wheels well, turning in her head from yep. here. As well, what happened is I bought it from off side of the road, and the man said he couldn't stop it. And I said, well, I'll just take it to a mechanic because I got it so cheap. The mechanic can't find it either. Huh. I have to wonder what's going on and if that's a common problem with the Chevy Equinox, too. I'd have to research that further. If you want to, we send an email I, I, to We done been through everything on it. Yep. Uh, send us an email if you can. Do you, do you use email much? No, we up here in the kid. We don't have email. And we don't have a, No, we can't do that. Okay. Well, I'd like to research something like that further. It's hard for me to to know from over over here without kind of doing some more research and finding out. Well, Lori, we're going to put, or I'm sorry, Judith, we're going to put you on hold and give the phone screener your phone number and uh, we'll, we'll look it up. Maybe Allison could look up an owner's forum for the 2008 Chevy Equinox. We'll we'll give a little homework uh, to Allison and yeah. uh, see if she can at least figure out where you could another thing you could check. So I'm going to put you on hold and uh, you give Java your uh, phone number so that we can get in touch with you. Okay, Judith. Oh, I sure will. All right, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, I did it. I didn't drop her. <laughs> okay, let's now go to uh, Lori, who's calling from Jackson. Lori, we're so glad that you have called in to autocorrect on our coolant radiator or whatever you want to talk about, Day. Well, uh, you asked what I thought was the most pertinent question, and I don't think it's been answered, and that was how do you responsibly uh, dis- dispose of any flu- uh, the leftover fluid. coolant? Yes, I, I I heard that question and I started listening for the answer. So I think that I'll just hang up and listen in. But I think that's vital for us to know. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Yeah, that was on my. Uh, that was I had circled that too. We didn't get to the answer of what do you do with the leftover coolant? What do you do after you flushed it out? So what you can do, and you wouldn't expect this to be the answer, but you can put it down the drain. Okay. If it goes into a water treatment facility, unlike oil and, and, and all these other fluids that are on your car, you can put this one down the drain. If you have a septic system, you do not want to put it down the drain. And because that's not it's not going to get treated. Okay. And so that's that's how you deal with antifreeze. So it's easy peasy. Easy All right. To deal but it's you know, it needs to get be diluted. And Liz, yeah. do we do birthday hollers? Because I've got a listener who wants his <laughs> birthday. Now, and I, I figured, Real quick. Why not? Who's your friend? Josh Smith. It's got a birthday. He maybe he needs to say how old he is <laughs> on, the, on the message. But yeah. So there we go. Shout out. Hey, Josh. All right. So today we're talking about your car overheating or maybe your car not getting hot enough. Uh, I I guess we don't really need to worry so much about the antifreeze part of the coolant in Mississippi. But we are taking your car repair questions after the break. Our number is 1-877-MPB-RING. That's 1-877-672. 7464. You could also send us an email. It's auto at mpbonline.org. What's an unreliable car not to buy? We'll get to that after the break. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. 
This is Ophira Eisenberg, host of NPR's Ask Me Another. Do you have an extra car that you wash more than most people go to the dentist? Well, save some time and some water and donate it to us. Think about it. Rather than it sitting there taking up space, your extra car could be making public radio. And when you donate it here, you may also qualify for a tax deduction. Donate your car, motorcycle, boat, or RV by going to mpbonline.org. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Allison Walker, you know, the lady auto mechanic, she's our expert. I'm Liz Gill, and we thank you for your contributions to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Um, I hope you've downloaded our app for your smartphone, the MPB Public Media app. So in addition to listening to our show on the MPB Public Media app, you can click on the support button and make a contribution. We rely on contributions to maintain our national programming and the high standards that we try to uphold. Now, Consumer Reports has a list of vehicles that have a record of much worse than average overall reliability based on subscriber responses to their annual auto survey, and today we're going to caution you about the Hyundai Sonata, the 2011, and it is reported to have engine problems. This was also one of the ones on uh, carcomplaints.com, so please consider reading up on the reliability of this car before purchasing it as a used car suggests Consumer Reports. But if you're interested in reviews of new cars, Casey Williams is the automotive correspondent for WFYI, a public radio station in Indianapolis. He's reviewed cars and covered the auto industry for 25 years. His review this week is on the 2020 Nissan Ultima all-wheel drive. AWD, because we we, yep. we learned that yes, when yes. we did our acronym show, we learned mm-hmm. that AWD means all-wheel drive. Mm-hmm. Today, we've been talking about radiators and coolants. Um, if you missed that earlier, go back and listen to the podcast. But uh, we're, we're taking your phone calls on that topic or anything else. So let's go ahead and go to James, who's on the road. Drive safely, James, especially if it's wet. Thanks for calling in to autocorrect today. Go ahead. Well, thank you for taking my phone call. You're very um, welcome. Okay, so um, I have a 2014 Volkswagen CC. And um, I took it into the dealership. Um, when, the, when the car first starts up, it kind of sputters. And the acceleration really isn't what it should be. And they told me that there's a carbon buildup on the cylinders. And they want $1,200 to fix this. And I'm wondering, is there anything that I can do uh, to, uh, to make this stop happening? Or what do you think? Oh, wow. Huh. Carbons build up on cylinders. That yeah. sounds like a long shot to me to be honest but i'll tell you you know the intake clean i don't know if you listen to our show often but i um here and there get to talk about an intake clean that let me ask this this just crossed my mind too Do you, is your car direct injection is it a gdi engine style it probably is yes. okay yes. what they're talking about is car build up on the intake valve and it can cause it to act up um how many miles okay. is on your car uh, I have 110,000. Okay. This is something you want to do every 15,000 to 20,000 miles or once a year. And it's $15 at the auto parts store. And you just follow the instructions and clean out that intake valve that gets built up with carb on it. If yours is worse than that, I still wouldn't think it would cost anywhere near that to clean that up unless they're actually yeah, I was pretty shocked. going into the engine itself um that seems a little bit extreme i would try the intake clean and do it like a couple of times and okay and so they sell a product um and i put it where 
or I... You, you put it in the intake system of the car. After the MAF sensor or airflow sensor, you would use like a vacuum port or something like that and squirt it in where it goes past the throttle body, and it'll go in okay. across your intake valve, and it'll clean it off and it'll clean out the, the carbs on it. I think we're going to start seeing this be a problem more often because a lot of people that have GDI engines don't know that you have to do this intake clean where the gasoline used to go over the top of the intake valve it's not anymore it used to clean it off and now it goes I into see. the cylinder yeah it goes it's directly injected um you know at the top of the cylinder instead of over the intake valve and that's what's causing all that car build up on there i've still never heard of such as something to charge that much for it so that makes <laughs> me really skeptical on that um so that's that's okay. what I would do. And then if you were still having a problem after that, maybe take it to somewhere different and get their opinion on it. <laughs> Correct. Uh, you know? No question. Um, so I just want to be sure. So I spray. So the product that I'm going to buy, it's in a spray canister. Is yes. that what it is? Or? Yep. It looks okay, like a WD-40 not. can kind of, but it's a light gray color. It's called CRC GDI Intake Cleaner. And any auto parts store will uh, have it. And it's a really good okay. product. It's about $15. And uh, I do them as part of regular uh, maintenance on all cars. Okay, and that was C CR CRC. CRC. Yes. Okay. And you can look um, up the product, too. You can Google the product so you'll know what the can looks like. CRC GDI Intake Cleaner. And it'll pull okay. up for you. All right. Is there so a, a YouTube that. video that he could watch? They do have YouTube okay, videos sure. for it. Okay. CRC yeah. company does. And is this the one that it takes two people because somebody yes. has to hold the accelerator down That's while right. you spray it? So you need to find a buddy, then you do each okay. other's cars and then have a beer or something. There you go. Mm -hmm. You got it. That's exactly the, the plan. <laughs> sounds, <laughs> so, sounds good. You, you know what? Let me know I'm how that to, goes if you can, uh, if you, if you ever think I'm about so it. I called you. This is like heaven sent because I'm driving well, a truck. Well, I, I'm I going hope so. to uh, Texas. I bumped into your show, and I love oh, it. Oh, wow. And I think you just saved me, let me see, twelve, eleven hundred dollars $1,100 and 80 uh, 11, I love a hundred dollars, and thank you so much. Yes, well, you're welcome. Uh, I hope I hope it works. helps. I James, hope we've been on the air for about a year and a half now. All of our shows are on podcast. You can find it on any podcast player. Auto correct. Listen, look us up, and tell all your friends. I just wrote that down, and I will indeed. You guys thank are great. You. Sounds so. good. Thank you so much. Thanks all right, for listening. Thank you. Safe travels. Bye bye. All right, now let's uh, yep. Let's take the next call. We're going to go to Jimmy, who's calling from McCool. Jimmy, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thanks for taking my call. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, my comment is on the lady with the 08 Equinox that's overheating. Yes. What you got? I worked on a couple of those things and. The V6 especially, they had... Uh, is it a V6 head, or an inline six? The V6. It's well, a V6. V6. Huh? Okay. Now I know they put and the had, inline six in, the, uh, in Envoy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, they had a head gasket problem. And the couple that I worked on, the head gasket would fail, and it would seep a little bit, and it put a little combustion gases back into the radiator. And, you know... Air don't cool as good as water, and you have air bubbles in there. Oh. And what they can do, what mechanics can do to find out, either they could use an exhaust gas sniffer over top of the radiator. Yep, I'm with the familiar vehicle with that. Running, mm -hmm. Or they could buy a little kit that uh, changes colors. Um, right. It, yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, to test the fluid for exhaust yeah. gases. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's that's a really good tip, and you're you're right. That's a good one. That head gasket leaking, and and a fix for that is you can use stop leak actually for that. Yeah, it, yeah, it is possible to help yeah, in this of, situation without yeah, having to go time, in and change all that out. Yeah, but a lot of times what I find that stop leak is just a temporary patch. A lot of times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and you're seeing where it wears out. 
eventually. Yeah. So you're saying go ahead and replace the head gasket then? Well, that that all depends on if it, uh, if, it, if, if that's what it is. Car or you know, get rid of it or you know. Now they make some pretty good stop leaks. Now it has changed over the years, but yep. in the past it used to be just be a temporary patch. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope she's still listening. So that's a really good uh, tip right there. And then we've got her phone number, so I'll call her and talk to her about that too. And and thanks for calling in and helping with those questions. Any any help is, is good. Sometimes I get stumped up here, and it's just my mind goes blank. There's just so many questions flying at me in a short amount of time. Um, so yeah. really appreciate that. Are you a mechanic? Oh well, I'm a mechanic. I'm a heavy equipment uh, okay. mechanic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're me- mechanically inclined then. Well, great. Well, I really appreciate you calling in and helping with that. That's a that's a really good one. That's that's true. Those head gases can have a little seep to them where you're not directly seeing a, a major problem. And then sometimes it seals up and sometimes it's not sealing up all the way and it's causing overheating. And like, like she said, where she was not having overheating all the time, it was kind of intermittent. So Yeah, and, an- and another thing she can check is... Uh Check and see if her fans are modulating. I mean, if she's just uh, sitting there idling and the fans are not uh, running up at full speed like they're supposed to, it will overheat too. Okay. If while she's sitting, okay. Uh huh. Okay, I'll I'll go over that with her too. That sounds good. Uh, Thanks okay. for the tips. Really appreciate okay. that. Okay. Thank you. Y'all have a nice day. You do the same, Jimmy. You're awesome. You get you get yeah. our gold award for today. Thank yes. you so much. All right, we're going to continue discussing radiators when we come back from the break. We're also taking your repair questions. Our number is one eight seven seven MPB ring. That's one eight seven seven. 672-7464. You can send us an email to auto at mpbonline.org. Allison, do you remember our show about cars in movies? Yes. We talked about the movie Bullet. I've got some news to share after the break. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Get your MPB car tag anytime. It doesn't even have to be up for renewal. Simply go to your county office to sign up. When you get an MPB car tag, a portion of the fee helps MPB continue to educate, inform, and entertain Mississippians. For details, visit mpbonline.org slash car tag. We'll see you on the road. Welcome back to AutoCorrect. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show at autocorrect.mpbonline.org. What is Deezer? I just now have found out Deezer is a French, is French, a French online music streaming service. Boy, that was a really bad French accent. It allows users (laughs) to listen to music content from record labels, including Universal Music Group, Sony Music Group, and Warner Music Group on various devices online or offline. And you can listen to MPB programming on Deezer. Now, I am Liz Gill. I'm with the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASE certified. Oh, and another thing I wanted to remind everybody, you know, from time to time, either through our fault or your fault, you might not be able to pick us up through your normal uh, antenna. And if that happens, please remember you can always pick us up online. You can pick us up through one of these streaming services Uh, Use our app. Lots of different ways. If you find yourself out of the city, out of the uh, state, out of the country, you don't have to miss MPB Think Radio. You can catch us digitally. Okay, so in the news, you know, we had a bunch of people call in and talk about uh, the movie Bullet and that there was this green Mustang. And I think Ford even sold a limited edition Bullet uh, 1968 Ford Mustang um, style that, that you could either get it in black or this dark green. It sold for seven, no, $3.74 million at auction last week. That's 
ridiculous. <laughs> the 390 wow. cubic inch 1968 Ford Mustang GT made famous by a very good car chase scene in Steve McQueen's not very good detective film Bullet was sold last Friday by Meckham Auctions in Mecham. Kissimmee, Mecham, yeah. uh, in Kissimmee, Florida, for a massive $3.74 million about five minutes after the car wow. rolled onto the dais. It started, the bidding started at what the owner paid for it. The bidding started at $3,500, <laughs> and everybody in the room raised their, their paddles for that. Um, and he bought it in a newspaper ad and then stored the vehicle. The He stored it, and then the owner passed away and left it to his son in 2014. Uh, and they, they, I guess they took it to an uh, the maybe uh, the Detroit Auto Show or something last year to get and took it on a around the world tour to get publicity for it, mm. and then uh, they sold it at auction last week. Smart for three point seven four million dollars. What a great investment! Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to the phones. We've got Steve O. calling from Jackson. Steve, thanks for calling in to AutoCorrect today. Go ahead. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, you can use a substance called sodium silicate for your coolant system. What it does is it puts a thin glass coating on all of your coolant system, and that's how you can easily seal a head gasket leak. Interesting. So where where do you get this? What what you get it at the drugstore. It's called sodium silicate. And you put about a half of it, um well that would be a little bit too much. You put about a quarter of it in the um system once the thermostat's open and everything and you got good flow from your water pump, you uh you pour it in your radiator and it puts a thin glass shield on your entire coolant system. And if it's still leaking, um, you let it cool off, and then you 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 keep applying coats of glass until that head gasket is sealed. Huh? I've never it's, heard of that before. That's that's uh, awesome if it works. I love well, it. yeah, it's called sodium silicate. And all it right, puts a sodium glass silicate. coating on all of your coolant systems. Well, Steve, we appreciate you calling in with that, Judith. If you're still listening, that is Steve's suggestion, and uh, you know maybe she can take it to one of her mechanics who tried to solve it and uh they can help her with that steve thank you so much we appreciate you calling in today all right let's go to alice who's called in from macomb alice thank you so much for being part of autocorrect today go ahead i just wanted it's not about a car i want uh, i don't have no tv work to, what's going to happen with the tv will we still be able to get you on the radio oh uh, with the with the tvs changing their uh frequencies yeah. The, yeah. The, uh, Karen Brown on Mississippi Edition talked with someone from the FCC about that this morning. Yeah. If you listen to MPB through I'm your television, lady, yeah. then uh, yeah, you'll you'll we're doing it in stages, and I know they're doing Meridian. Uh, I believe it's this week. You'll just be prompted to. Uh, rescan your television, and uh, we'll be sure to oh, let you. I don't you... have a TV. I, oh, I, have, oh, I, then... I don't watch TV right now. Okay, so well, that's no. Why I call to see if I still be able to get you on the radio. Oh, no, the radio. Here. We're not going anywhere. We are. Ooh. We are not going anywhere, Alice. Uh, you, we're we're right here, and you can listen whenever you like. All right, thank you. Because I haven't watched a TV, had a TV in about over a year now, and I'm doing good with the radio. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> Thanks thank for, you so much. Oh, you're welcome, Alice. Thanks for calling in. Um, we did get an email about our show last week on blind spots, and this would apply to you. Well, not necessarily to you. When you do your autocross, it's just you versus the road. Yes. It's just you versus the pylons yes. <laughs> and the cones but this is uh uh jay patterson 
and it said, Dear Autocorrect, for blind spots, you can use racing mirrors, plain and simply eliminate automobile blind spots. The Wink 5 panel mirror has five flat panel mirror positions at varying angles to provide 180 degree rear vision. The normal mounting is screwed into the windshield border. Recently, adhesive glass mounting kits are available to support it directly on the glass. Race drivers need this information and can ill afford to turn their heads at 200 miles per hour to identify competitors. This is called the Wink Five Panel Mirror. Wow, I haven't heard of it, but that makes sense. That's yeah. that's pretty awesome. One day I might need that when I race car to car. Right. Um, huh, that's fascinating. I wonder how much it costs. But I guess if you really want to be super, super safe, you can do that. Oh, and yeah. Well, I would think really at well. 200 miles per hour, you would want to be really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> super, super safe. Absolutely. Let's, uh, let's finish up a little bit with our uh, radiator. Uh, coolant stuff. Okay, so uh, we've alluded to this, but for those of us in the peanut gallery who aren't very smart or who don't have experience with this, coolant and antifreeze are the same thing. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. It keeps the car from getting too hot and keeps the car from getting too cold. Right. All right. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned that uh, you can put the coolant down the drain if it's going to a water treatment Mm -hmm. facility. Um, and it doesn't have a dipstick, but there's a gauge. So, so if you're going to check level, it, yeah. you know, maybe your car is at fifty thousand, or maybe it's at a hundred and fifty thousand, mm-hmm. and you don't need to change it. If it's low, what what do you add? What you need to add is the fifty fifty mixture that's already pre mixed. And keep it simple and, and just do that. When you start adding water to your system, you're breaking down the ability of that coolant to do what it's supposed to do. Water will rust the inside. It'll tear everything up on the inside of your cooling system. Uh, it also causes electrolysis to happen even more so. With old coolant, as it breaks down, electrolysis happens, and that's electricity in your system. And that causes pitting, flaking, scaling and much more corrosion to happen at a rapid pace. Um, So that's why you want your coolant refreshed is because of those things that happen. And if you're losing coolant for some reason, I see it all the time where people just add water. Next thing you know, they have a corrosion problem and a coolant leak problem that has to be cleaned out really, really thoroughly and then put in fresh coolant. So if you're losing coolant at all, just use 50-50 and add to it. If that seems a little bit expensive, because you're losing it that much, then get the full formula and add water and mix it with the formula and put that together in into your system. And you want to try to use distilled water if available because tap water has mineral deposits and stuff like that in it that aren't good for your cooling system. But it's not the end of the world. If that's what you've got available, then, then use that. So that's what you add, and don't add just water. So when you're going to buy it, make sure if you're buying either pure coolant or it'll say 50-50. That's right. Oh, another hour has gone by so thank you very much for coming Allison yes, you're indeed. great thanks we appreciate uh, Java Chapman and Michelle McAdoo so for Allison Walker remember you can find her Allison Walker uh, also on Facebook Twitter and Instagram as the lady auto mechanic I'm Liz Gill up next is our Thursday Southern Remedy show kids and teens with Dr. Morgan McLeod but oh man I don't know if we're going to be here next Thursday there's got this in Impeachment business coming on, but you try to find us at 10 a.m. Autocorrect on Thursdays on MPB Think Radio or as our podcast. Deep South Dining is the show all about the culture of Southern flavor. From fried chicken and collard greens to shrimp and grits and a glass of sweet tea. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or download our MPB public media app.